In some schools, it seems learning the three R's, reading, writing and arithmetic, is no longer enough. There's now a fourth R, radicalisation. Education authorities are so worried about a rise in religious extremism among students, they've identified dozens of Australian schools as possible breeding grounds for junior jihadis. Equally concerning, earlier this month, the principal and deputy of one high school in Sydney southwest were removed from their jobs after refusing to implement a government de-radicalisation initiative. It was a program designed to counter anti-social and extremist behaviour. The replacement principal is now promising to teach students core Aussie values. But is that enough in the battle for our kids' hearts and minds? It seems OK on the streets, but there's an underbelly. Is it fair to say? You could say that. You could say that. This is Australia's Muslim heartland, the tough streets of Sydney's southwest. Sarkis Akmar knows them like few others. I have a distinct worry for the next generation coming through. He knows the troubled teens who live here and the radical recruiters who prey on them. As long as the spotlight is off, it will raise its ugly head again. It's just the way it is out there, man. Mm. I, I've known it was coming from years ago. This is home. This is where I was born, where I was raised. A tireless youth worker for more than a decade, Sarkis is dedicated to rescuing wayward kids from the clutches of evil. A Sydney schoolboy is behind bars tonight, allegedly radicalised and involved in a plot to carry out a terror attack. A 15-year-old boy has been named as the... Kid. Now he's facing a battle like never before. Another lone wolf and again he's a teenager. Inspiring to run over and behead a policeman. Accused of preparing a terrorism attack to blow up our city. We believe self-radicalised, but certainly inspired by... ISIS. My brothers, there's a role for everybody here in Syria, and this is the land of Mubarak. This stretch of suburbia has already seen 20 young Muslims join up to fight for Islamic State. But Sarkis fears there will be more. Are schoolyards a target? I believe schoolyards are a target, yes. What ages? Usually teenagers, teenagers, but I have um, worked in conjunction with primary school kids in the past. You're saying kids as young as 10 and 11 could be being radicalised? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. In the past two weeks, Punchbowl Boys High School has been at the centre of a bitter row of the schoolyard radicalisation. With accusations, not enough has been done to stop students being swayed by extremists. The dispute calls into question our very approach to tackling this insidious threat and the radicals who recruit them. It's not an Islam thing. It's an extremist thing. It's these people who have an evil agenda and they're using our Australian way of life system against ourselves. I love the boys that are out there. It's a boys' school, Punchbowl Boys High School. Adding to the mystery of what was going on behind these gates was the sacking of former principal Chris Griffiths by the New South Wales Education Department. They said he was causing disunity, disharmony and disengagement with the rest of the community. So what's it like to go to Australia's most controversial school? At the time I was there, it wasn't a controversial school at all. Rather, it was a school that was gaining good reputation and a good status and good amongst society. It was a school that was turning boys into men. I urge my e-group and the years below me to be kind towards each other. Strive for the best in whatever you do. Jihad Rifi is one of the many success stories to emerge from Punchbowl Boys High. One, two, three, yeah! He spent six years at the school before graduating as vice captain under Chris Griffiths in 2015. We call ourselves the Punchbowl family. By the end of year 12, you're very like friends with everyone. Everyone's your brother at the end of the day. Those in your year and those in the years below you. So and then there's, there's that great sense of brotherhood there. When Jihad was in his final year, he learned his principal had converted to the Islamic faith. But he believes Chris Griffith's dismissal has more to do with his management style than his Muslim beliefs. It had nothing to do with the religion at all, nothing to do with his personal conversion to Islam, but rather it was um, just his... Uh, he had just a different, a different methodology in how he wanted to, to run the school. One of the criticisms of Chris Griffith's was that he didn't shake hands with women. Now, from the outside, that can look disrespectful. 
it could look disrespectful, but I think it's just a matter of what you perceive as respect. There's this whole big spin on, you know, why don't you sh follow the Australian way and shake hands with women? Well, part of the Australian way is also to have the freedom of, of religion. And part of my beliefs uh, is to is that show respect for women is to not shake their hand. And so I, I like to act upon that. Did he allow women to be part of school events? Yes, definitely. To be part of school functions? Yes. To be part of daily life? Yes, all the women were there. All the women were taking part and, and Chris Griffiths was the principal at that time. Can I just compliment you firstly? On the food, and thank you for having me in your house. And secondly, on your wonderful shirt. Thank you. It's magnificent. Well, I do what is actually specifically for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jihad's parents, respected Muslim community leader Dr. Jamal Rifi and wife Lana, admit they were initially concerned about sending their son to Punchbowl Boys High. Uh, every mum worries about their kids. Uh, for you going to that school initially, you had some, some minor concerns. Yes, I had a lot of concerns. I was worried. It didn't have a very good reputation. But they let Jihad attend the school because it was trying to integrate with the wider community, something Chris Griffiths is accused of changing when he became principal 18 months ago. Do you think Chris Griffiths got it wrong in closing the school off a little bit to the community? Absolutely. Absolutely. What we had before, it was a winning formula. Why do you want to change a winning formula? We did not pass a judgment. But we sat there, we watched, and definitely he fell on his sword. But when it comes to anti-radicalisation programs, Jihad Rifi believes Chris Griffiths was right to reject them because he says they actually play into the hands of the radical recruiters. I think it stemmed from um, rather him wanting to shield the boys and protect them from the spotlight, basically. I mean, we're a majority Muslim school. Mm. All the boys are Muslim, and, and religion is something very important to us. But if you've got nothing to hide, then what's the problem with a de-radicalisation program? It alienates us. Are you already assuming we are radicalised? Are you already assuming that? So should, should, should we, do we need a de-radicalisation program? I mean... People are going to say, hang on a second, toughen up, lads. Extremists aren't going to come from any other religion at the moment, and they're going to come from schools like that. No, not, it won't be schools like mine at all, because I was there and I've experienced it. So you believe the current policy is more likely to radicalise than de-radicalise? Not, it's not likely to radicalise, it's likely to aid in radicalisation. I mean, when there's no support from the outside, you seek support from the inside, and that's where you find it. In England, schoolyard radicalisation has been an escalating issue. Teacher and Imam Haviz Rahman knows what it's like to work with at-risk students. If you're actually going to dictate to the Muslims as youth and constantly bang up that you are the problem, it causes a massive problem. Rather than solving an issue, you're actually kind of distancing them to work within a cohesive society. Yeah, the year 13 are youth. Like Punchbowl Boys High, most of the students at the Imam's Carlton Bowling School in Bradford are Muslim. Three years ago, the school was put on the UK's special measures list for not doing enough to prevent extremism. The need to intervene was extremely important, in my opinion. Uh, we did not want to see another family actually moving over to Syria and a conflict zone. So these kind of scenarios become problematic for everybody. The Imam believes government and police anti-radicalisation programs often do more harm than good. So the school implemented its own. There were issues of trust with the program. There was issues of uh, alienating full communities uh, based on their religion and beliefs. And it was a very top-down approach. And having a top-down approach without no consultancy with the community, with the people that they're actually going to be in, uh, working alongside with, it was a barrier between both sets of gr both groups. Back in Sydney, New South Wales Department of Education boss Mark Scott admits there is a problem at Punchbowl Boys High that must be fixed. There were some concerns about um, how the school was changing. It had been one of our poster schools, very closely engaged with the community, but it had seemed to become more isolated, more locked away, and that had generated concern, and staff were concerned at the leadership and they were concerned at the direction the school was taking. For the first time, Mark Scott has told 60 Minutes the real reasons for Principal Chris Griffith's departure, including the alarming revelation 
He failed to report violent threats made against one of his teachers by a student. If you have threats to staff, if there are threats of violence, these are the kinds of things that should be appropriately reported and we had evidence that there had been minimal, if any, reporting coming from the school for a period of time. The education boss also says female staff had felt excluded at school events and that Chris Griffiths repeatedly refused to run a program designed to educate kids about the dangers of extremism. I was concerned that he was given three occasions uh, to welcome that program into the school and he decided not to. And it was on learning that, that I decided I wanted a full appraisal done of that school. Our schools need to be open and engage with the police, have the police as a presence at the school if necessary, even on a social level. But there, there should be good communication between schools and the police when necessary. For now, the sacked principal at the centre of the scandal remains in the shadows. While well, Mr Griffiths continues his seclusion and silence at his Sydney home, I caught up with the new principal of Punchbowl Boys High School and levelled the accusations made against his school to him. Is it a breeding ground for young jihadis, they say? Nowhere near it. Nowhere. No near. evidence. No Not evidence happening. at all. I haven't seen it. I've only been there for two weeks, but none. Robert Petruno is standing steadfastly by his school. There is any reputation of What do you say to people who say that about your school? What do I say? Punchbowl is a fantastic school. So, you know, your boy there. You're going to get the school more involved in the community though now? You're going to start to try and rebuild those relationships? I don't think it's about rebuilding, it's about consolidating. As any school community does, we always look at consolidating and building on the successful programs we give the school, and that's what I'll try and do. Have mistakes been made? Do you concede that? I haven't seen any at, at this stage. Did you ever see any evidence of radicalisation around the school? Oh, no. Uh, I don't know. No, not at all. Not at all. Would you know, respectfully? Yes, I definitely would know, because I, I was the vice captain. And not only was I very close with the people in my year, I was very close with the people in younger years and still am. I, I learnt my religion there. I, learnt, I go, went to every single prayer, uh, Friday prayer group. There was nothing out of the ordinary. It wasn't like... It was just a, just a normal school, I guess. That's it. The stakes have never been higher. Youth worker Sarkis Akmar warns that when it comes to extremism, our lives are quite literally on the line. What if there isn't a de-radicalisation program in a high school? What happens? We're going to face atrocities that we thought would never be in our every day on Australian soil. We're it, it's, I'm not fear-mongering, I'm not scaring, but I'm talking about this small percentage has a very large percentage impact. If the Muslim community wants to stop kids being radicalised, can they do it? When someone asks me, can the Muslims stop it, why can't we stop it? When I say we, my Muslim brothers and sisters, my Hindu brothers and sisters, my Buddhists, we are Australian. Let's go forward and do it. As for Jihad Rifi, he prays people will one day see the students at Punchbowl Boys High the same way he does. As good Muslims and good Australians. There are some who say you should be Australian first and Muslim second. Well, what is Australia? I mean, what makes Australia great? It's that diversity and multiculturalism. It's that, that when you go, when you go up the road, there's you can choose from a Thai shop, you can choose from a, you know, you can get chicken, you can get a kebab, you can get. Shawarma, it's all, it's all different. That's what makes Australia great. What would you say to people who make judgments on Punchbowl Boys High School? Maybe try and get to understand the boys. I mean, maybe just hear their stories. Maybe hear their grievances. Because if they've got no one to turn to, then who are they gonna turn to? I think we know the answer. For more of Education Boss Mark Scott's interview, go to Extra Minutes.